Hi, this is The Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. Look for our uh, up and coming audio podcasts, which should be coming up soon. I'll let you know when they start and we'll make sure that you get a link to them. This particular video is about a great little gun that was lent to me by a buddy of mine who's a collector. This is a Colt Detective Special. These things haven't been made for a long time. As a matter of fact, I think Colt started making them in 1927 and they stopped making them, unfortunately, in 1986. This particular pistol was made in 1950. I was. I, had a chance to look it up on the Colt website you know, with the serial number, and it fit the story of the gun, which I'm going to tell you in just a second. But let me tell you a little bit about Colt revolvers in general, but the Detective Special in particular. Colt revolvers were loved by a lot of folks, including my father, who carried a Colt Python for many years as a, as a sheriff's deputy. They were loved because they were made extremely well, and they had a fabulous trigger right out of the box. There's just nothing better, really, out of the box than a Colt revolver's trigger. Now, you can make a, a revolver trigger that good on just about any quality revolver, but for whatever reason, Colt was just really attentive to that when they built their guns. And their guns were a little more expensive as a result, and I think that's one of the reasons why Smith & Wesson beat them out in a lot of areas. Back in the early days when, uh, when police officers carried primarily revolvers, the two kinds of revolvers you would see almost universally in a police officer's holster was either a Colt or a Smith & Wesson. And there was a battle between them as they fought it out for that law enforcement market. Smith & Wesson always had a little bit larger swath of that market than Colt did, and I think a lot of that was price. But Smith & Wesson chased the market with what they called the Smith & Wesson M&P. It was originally called the Smith & Wesson Hand Ejector, then became the Smith & Wesson Military and Police, and we know it today as the Smith & Wesson Model 10. The competing product from Colt was the Colt Police Positive, and this is nothing more than a shortened Police Positive with a little smaller grip. I'll tell you how they came about. The Police Positive was the Colt's answer to the Smith & Wesson Model 10. It was a six-shot duty size revolver with a duty size barrel. It had a blade front sight and groove rear sight just like the Model 10. It was strong, it was accurate, and it was chambered in 38 Special predominantly. Now they did chamber them in 32 caliber for a while, but the 32s were kind of anemic and the 38 Special was much more powerful and much more effective. Now along the way in the 1920s, there was a gent called J.H. Fitzgerald. He came along and said, gee, I like the police positive. I like these full-size guns, but I want one that'll fit in my pocket or fit in my jacket pocket that I can bust out and protect myself with right now if I have to. And so he would take them and shorten them. He would shorten the barrel down to two inches. He would bob the hammer. And then he did something very controversial. He would cut off the front of the trigger guard back to about here so that you didn't have to worry about your finger getting caught on the trigger guard. It went right on the trigger and you just swept right past there to get on the trigger. Made getting the gun out and shooting a lot faster. Now today, we would say that that's unsafe because of the way that we're trained, and I would tend to agree. But back then, they were really popular because of the way he made them. They were really, really, really quick to action, and they were just belly guns. They weren't meant to be accurate. They were meant for across a room or the guy right in front of you who's trying to hurt you defending yourself. He called them the Fitzgerald Specials, and he sold a lot of them. Well, you know, a little snubby became pretty popular, so companies like Colt decided to make them at the factory rather than force people to customize them themselves. They realized there was a market there. So they came up with the Colt Detective Special. Now there's a few things unique about the Detective Special that we don't see in snubbies today. One is, if you open up the cylinder, you are somewhat shocked when you count the number of holes because you realize that unlike snubbies today, like the snubby I'm carrying, or that I carry all the time, or the Smith & Wesson J-Frame my partner carries, or the ones that are very popular today, the, you know, there's a lot of manufacturers that make them, almost universally when they're in 38 Special, they are five-shot revolvers. Well, this one is not. This is a six-shot revolver. It holds six shots of 38 Special ammunition, and that is really cool, particularly when you run out and you need that last sixth one. Well, this gun's going to have it, and my gun is not. The interesting thing about it is I've really fiddled with this the last few days, and this one, even though it's a six-shot revolver, you can see it's not really all that beefy or wide. In fact, this gun fits in the same holster as my Taurus Model 85. It's about the same size, almost identical, but it still has that extra round of ammunition. 
The other things that are interesting about Colts in general is the fact that they designed them with a different, some different thoughts in mind. One is the cylinder, instead of rotating counterclockwise, actually rotates clockwise. And if you ever wonder, if you don't know revolvers well, and you ever wonder how to tell which way the cylinder rotates without actually rotating it, all you have to do is look for the cylinder bolt notch. That's this little notch that's on the back of the cylinder. It looks like a bullet, and whatever direction the bullet is pointing, the little notch is pointing, that's the direction the cylinder rotates. In the case of most revolvers today, they rotate counterclockwise. In the case of the Colts, they rotated clockwise. I'm sure there's some engineering reasons for that. I don't have time to discuss in the video, but I will put them up on the blog and uh, probably in the podcast. But And so you can check there. I'll put a link for the blog here so that you can, you can check there and we'll find out about that. But it is interesting to, to remember that they do rotate the other way. The other thing is that the cylinder release on a Colt is different than that of a Smith & Wesson or a Ruger or a Taurus. Smith & Wesson, Taurus, guns like that, you push forward on the cylinder release. It's a separate little knob and the cylinder comes out. Ruger, you push in. But on Colt, the cylinder release is actually part of the blast shield behind the ammunition and behind the cylinder. And you pull back on it toward the rear of the pistol, the blast shield and everything moves, and the cylinder swings out. There haven't been a pistol made like that in a long time in the United States that I'm aware of, and the only one that I'm aware of in the United States that ever did that was the Colt, and they were all built that way. So these guns are really fabulous little guns. I, I got some questions about it walking around the range with it. Uh, one of the questions I got was, does Colt still make them? And no, they don't. Uh, they stopped making them in 1986. Another question I got was, are they good guns? Well, uh, yeah, they're <laughs> really, really, really good guns. Uh, are they valuable? Yes, they're extremely valuable. They are collector's items, so if you happen to get your hands on one, I would not use it for self-defense or carry it around. Instead, I would enjoy it and uh, shoot it for fun, but take really good care of it. Um, somebody asked me, can you shoot plus P ammunition in them? And the answer is no. They're not built for that. They won't handle the pressure. Uh, if you shoot plus P in it, you may not blow up the gun right away, but you're going to do some damage to it, and it's just too valuable and too beautiful a gun to damage that way. This particular gun is about 80% would be my guess. Um, because it's got a lot of holster wear, but it was carried a lot and shot very little. This thing shoots like a dream, which reminds me, I think it's time to get out on the range and shoot this thing. So let's go do that, and then we'll talk about it a little bit after we get out on the range and knock some things down. wonderful little Colts are such a joy to shoot that you can stand out here and shoot them all day, particularly 38s because they're so inexpensive. But the trigger, even on this little, uh, tiny little gun, uh, it's almost, it's better than a target triggers I have on other revolvers I own. I mean, just press, it's so smooth. It's just buttery smooth all the way through. Now, the only issue I have is that the grips are so stinking small and my hands are so big that the gun wiggles around in my grip. I, I, you know, I can barely get my a decent grip on it because of the way the grips are. They're just kind of really, really tight or small. So I have to really grip the snot out of it to hang on to it. It's not got a lot of recoil, but you'll notice every time I shoot, I'm re-gripping the gun because it wiggles around in my hand. So that brings me, that gives me an opportunity to share with you something. When you're trying a gun, or if you have a gun, if every time you shoot it, you have to readjust your grip, that's because the gun doesn't fit you. It's probably too small or too big, or whatever the case might be. In this case, this one is just way too small. I'm a big guy, I've got really big hands. And as much as I enjoy shooting it, the grips are so small that the gun just wiggles around in my hand every time it goes off. Even though it's a 38 Special, doesn't have hardly any, I mean, it has hardly any recoil at all. Oops. Boy, I knew I could get that out if I kept trying. But nevertheless, even with a little bit of recoil of a 38, it's still wiggling around in my hand constantly. As you can see, this thing is a great little revolver and it runs really, really well. It is in great condition, particularly for a gun that was purchased in 1950. Now, I told you there was a story that went with it, so let me tell you that story before I wrap things up. This gun actually belonged to a California Highway Patrol officer who joined the California Highway Patrol in 1949 and continued with that department for 30 years, retiring in 1979. 
1950 or 51, the family doesn't remember, he purchased this gun as a backup to his duty revolver. Now, this gun was made in 1950, so I suspect that's probably when he bought it. And he carried it around with him for the majority of his career and then retired in 1979. And at some point, a couple, two or three years ago, unfortunately, the gentleman passed away. Well, when he did, his family had an estate sale and they sold a lot of his belongings, except for this gun. And it was later when they were moving things around and moving furniture that they found a shoebox which was hidden under his bed. And in that shoebox was this little Colt Detective Special. Now, interestingly enough, the gun had been in the shoebox for so long that even though it was loaded, it was completely non-functional and it was frozen shut. You couldn't get it open, they couldn't get it to move, and they had to be really careful about it because the gun was loaded. Well, a friend of mine who's a, a, a collector of firearms was asked about it. He took a look at it and he bought it even though it was loaded and though it was non-functional. He thought, well, you know, I might not get anything out of it, but I might be able to restore it. So he took it home and very carefully and very gently took the gun apart, got the cylinder to come out, removed the ammunition, cleaned it up, lubed it up, and put it back together. And that's the gun that you see before you right now. This gun now functions flawlessly. It shoots beautifully, as you can see. It, it's just really, it's almost like a brand new pistol because it was obviously carried a lot and shot very little and then left in a box for decades. In fact, you can tell how long it was in that box because the ammunition that was in it was Winchester 38 Special Ball ammunition from the 1960s. So it had been sitting in that shoebox under his bed for who knows how long. When you get a gun like this, it's really neat to have the gun. But when you have the story too, it adds value to the gun emotionally and in, just because it's intriguing, but it also adds value financially. I have no idea how much this gun is worth, but I can tell you to my buddy, it's worth a lot and he'll probably never sell it. Anyway, that's the Colt Detective Special. Unfortunately, I have to give it back. It'd be really nice to keep it, but I'm not gonna get to do that. Uh, if you want, you can check on the website. I'm gonna write a little blog about it and we'll, come, we'll, uh, we'll include some information on the website uh, in the blog that, was not, that we weren't able to include here just because of time. And uh, you can check out maybe some additional pictures of it as well if you'd like. It's a terrific little pistol. Anyway, thank you again for watching my videos. Please like, subscribe. I don't know where the button is, it's up here somewhere. Share us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those social media places. Our channel is growing like a weed. I'm very, very grateful. If you're watching this channel and you're watching other gun channels, good for you. If you like guns and you enjoy watching gun videos, but you're not a member of the National Rifle Association, you should be. I want to urge you to join the National Rifle Association today to help defend our firearms and rights and our Second Amendment rights. In California, we really need your help. I'm going to put a link right here so that you can do that. And if you click on it, it'll take you to a spot on our website at gunguide.tv where you can join the National Rifle Association. It'll save you a little bit of money and you can join the NRA for a year for less than the cost of one box of ammunition and add your voice to the rest of ours. Please do that. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful week and be safe.